he was a phenomenal master in, in the sense of, in, in, a, in two senses. I mean, one, he had amazing hand control. So, and he'd been trained as a, uh, an illustrator and, uh, and really a commercial artist. And he was really very, very good. Um, but in the, the second sense was that he understood materials probably better than any other 20th century artist did. So you have woman number five, which is one of the six uh, very famous, uh, uh, the first woman series that de Kooning did. Uh, and along with that, there are a number of uh, other works that represent different um, phases in de Kooning's career. I, th I think there's a painting from the 1960s, there's probably one from the 70s, and there's one of the late works from the 80s. I think it's from 83, maybe the, the one that you have, which uh, people tend to call abstractions, that series of works, as opposed to Woman 5, which everyone recognizes as a, a very uh, frontal image of a woman. Uh, but the, even the works in the 80s are based on uh, de Kooning's own drawings of the body. And those, those late works get very spare and they focus on some of these uh, linear motifs that he was fond of and put them together in different ways. So that makes them look very abstract and technically I suppose most art historians would call them abstract art. But I always think of them as figurative, nevertheless. He's not a, a more important figure, but he's, uh, you know, I, in my opinion, he's as important, and he has a different kind of importance. I mean, Pollock had a much shorter career. Yeah. Pollock, in his own way, was a virtuoso also. Um, Pollock was certainly equally inventive. Um, I think, you know, if de Kooning were around, he'd probably point out all the ways in which he was more inventive than Jackson Pollock was. But, but those two artists had great respect for each other, and right. they got along pretty well. De Kooning got into trouble with critics like Clement Greenberg, for example, because he maintained this commitment to representing something that he thought was real, that wasn't just a, an idea or a concept or, or didn't disconnect itself from what you could see. So his interest in the body, which remained with him always, um, connected him to life, he felt. Yes. Uh, where, whereas these theories about abstraction were never, you know, what he regarded as theoretical speculation, the kind of thing that uh, Greenberg uh, would talk about when he talked about, uh, you know, how uh, advanced art should be flatter, less illusionistic, and so on. That, for de Kooning, th those were just philosophical ideas, what he would call, you know, fancy ideas that had little to do with what artists actually yeah. ought to be doing.